Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Dr. Jolie Hamilton, who is in Massachusetts. How are you doing, Dr. Jolie? I'm doing great. It's a nice rainy night here, nice and cozy. It is. Oh, <laughs> lovely. Yeah. And, uh, and, and Jolie has a, a, a doctorate degree from Pacifica Graduate Institute in depth psychology with a specialization in Jungian and archetypal studies, which is a fascinating area of study. <laughs> and what we're going to talk about today is, is how we navigate our marriages or committed relationships actually impacts our business, whether we want to admit it or not, whether we think we can totally separate those things or not. Uh, it's not true. And there are some practical steps to leverage entrepreneurial skills to have a better home life now. And as we were saying before, we just came on air, who doesn't want a better home life, right? And particularly given all the stresses and strains of the pandemic to load on to the normal stresses and strains. It's a good subject, great subject to talk about now. So what is it? So, so first of all, let's, let's examine the premise of this. Uh, entrepreneurial, bringing entrepreneurial skills into your relationships, explain. Yeah, so I hit upon this idea because I realized that after starting 12 businesses, the one thing that I could count on in my relationships was actually the same thing I counted on when I started businesses. It was risk tolerance. Mm -hmm. I didn't mind showing up and taking a risk and having the tough conversation. And that led me to do some research, do some digging. And I came across a study done by Gallup that pointed out the 10, top 10 um, entrepreneurial skills. And when I did, I noticed that, yeah, these are skills that are transferable to relationships. However, not everyone does. A lot of people mm -hmm. compartmentalize. They, they have one persona at work, one persona at yeah. home. So I wanted to make sure we were looking closely and actually leveraging those skills. And it's turning out to work out really, really well. I just I have to put a little intention into it. Yeah. So why do you think that is, though, naturally that people sometimes adopt dual personas, like a home persona yeah. and then a work persona? Why do they feel a need to do that? Well, many of us, okay, wait, all of us, we pattern our relationships on our earliest um, models, our parents or mm -hmm. our caregivers, right? And so we have one set of patterns that we work there, but then we pattern our career self on a different set of role models. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that includes our parents, and often they've compartmentalized these parts of themselves. But when we integrate ourselves, when we like get serious about becoming a unified personality, <laughs> <laughs> we mm -hmm. can leverage all of our strengths. It's not so much that one or the other of these personas is good or bad. It's just that we are often cutting off some of our actual strengths and, and molding into an image that we don't have to. We can be more complicated, um, but it's not probably the image we were presented when we were young. Right, right. So that, that's, that's it. Fascinating. So if you think about it, then the, the conflict, right? So you're your earliest um, modelings, your parents go back a long way. Your work ones maybe start, you know, obviously a lot less further back. But isn't there a kind of an inherent conflict there between these two? Yeah, there often is. And many people feel a conflict between the values that they were brought up with and mm -hmm. the ones that they want to live into. And often we either idealized our parental model or we demonized it. So we're either mm -hmm. trying to push and be exactly what we saw or we're trying to run as hard as we can away from that and the truth is that there's something in the middle this is all a spectrum of us living into our individual actual strengths rather than mm -hmm. trying to be something that we saw but it takes yeah. a little effort and the same is if you think about it with role models and at work i mean again sometimes we try to be exactly the opposite to the early maybe managers or, yes. or supervisors we had or more like them because some of them were great or we just trying to pick and pick a composite of them yeah yeah and then we forget that in fact our individuality is our greatest gift no one can mm -hmm. replace that unique self and that's at the heart of my work yeah. So then let's look at it a, a little more detail about the entrepreneurial skills. So what are some of the things when we go home and we work, we walk through the door, which is nowadays maybe literally walking from one room to another, as opposed to coming in from outside the house and after a day's yeah. work. 
Um, but what are some of the things that uh, that maybe we are we are not doing that we could do that to set the atmosphere correctly? You know, when we yeah. re-engage after a work day. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of people are familiar with the idea of decompression, you know, mm -hmm. using a transition time to decompress so that we're meeting our partner with a better energy than we mm -hmm. than we might just walk in haphazardly with. However, what I notice is that one, the pandemic absolutely puts us into a place where that decompression time may be reduced to actually zero. We may yeah. be overlapping with our spouse all day, but also even if we're decompressing, with the way technology works now, we may not be decompressing the way that we mm -hmm. would have on a long drive home, listening to the radio as maybe our parents did and there wasn't another option. We may be instead trying to fit in just another thing, listening to more information, gathering more information. And while that's great, it can, we can forget to actually recenter ourselves in a relational mindset and recenter towards the person that we're aiming at home, they were aiming to greet at home, right? It's just easy to forget to. And when we do that, we bring not just work home with us, but we bring this sort of, um, this, this miasma of not transitioning. Transitions are hard for humans. Mm -hmm. They're just mm -hmm. challenging, right? And we bring that in the door or 18 inches outside of our door, yeah. perhaps. Yeah. yeah, not the best and, foot forward. Yeah, and it's also, it, there's a couple of interesting things. It's also, then when naturally it's you know even the questions even the things we say to each other like how was your day or you know yeah. how is work and those are questions that generally tend to grate on you right i mean yeah. to a lot of people because it's like it's like it's one of the things that we learned um through psychology from psychologists with children it's when they start school the minute they come home to ask them how their how their day was at school and to ask them to repeat everything was actually the incorrect thing to do yeah yeah it's not actually a connecting move it, mm -hmm. there is a real uh, there's an energy behind there that is thoughtful but it's not getting to the seed of what's mm -hmm. really going to work and so we have to be more creative and more strategic and that's where i think mm -hmm. that entrepreneurial mindset can help us even if the the actual practices are a little off kilter right. to start with but we can mm -hmm. be strategic about what we ask how we talk yeah so what are some some of those skills because obviously if you're an entrepreneur then you don't treat everybody the same i mean you yeah. you as you said i mean you strategize on okay i'm i'm talking to jolie now you know jolie is it, it going to be an important customer blah 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 i'm going to treat you in a particular way um is that part of it maybe when you talking about your relationships maybe being a little bit more strategic and thoughtful about how you're going to communicate it is it's a reminder to come off of autopilot and mm -hmm. and re-engage with wow you know this is a special customer right? like mm -hmm. this is the person i signed up to stand <laughs> yeah. next to right mm -hmm. and let me remember that this person matters in that way in this huge way and i think of it as a two-fold process on the one hand we need to have small habits of ritual reconnection and we can mm -hmm. work on developing those and on the other hand there is a there is one question that can can shift your entire attitude towards your partner and can move you away from those prosaic, you know, how was your day conversations and move you into a real a generative, unique relationship that was made custom made for these two people. And it's a question that isn't asked very often. What I think we need to be asking each other is what is our purpose? What is this relationship's purpose? Mm. And we, we, found, we found our whole relationship on that. If I know what my relationship's purpose is, I can approach it with the kind of spirit and the kind of energy that it actually requires and deserves. And that becomes, a, it's a much broader conversation, but between little habits of ritual reconnection and knowing what the purpose of this relationship is, it's possible to really have a standout relationship rather than a get by. Yeah, no, this, I just want to unpack a couple of things there. Yeah. But, uh, but that, that, that's really fascinating because if you, because one of the things, even when it comes from a business point of view um, and people in their jobs, I don't think people enough ask themselves that question either. Yeah. You know, just yeah. of yourself, like, what is my purpose? Why am I doing what I'm doing? Why am I working here? What are my goals? What am I trying to achieve? I think those questions go unanswered a lot. And that's where a lot of frustration comes from because you just think you're doing something uh, because it's expected of you or you don't think you can yes. do something else or w whatever it is. So I think that idea of, of purpose is, is something that doesn't come naturally 
to ask about purpose in your job, just ask about purpose in your relationship, ask about purpose in your life. Um, what are some of the, what are some of the, when, when you start to, uh, when you start to um, really look at that and really start to discover purpose, what, what changes does that bring about? Yeah. Well, when I work with clients on having their purpose conversations, and that's a mm -hmm. series of conversations, you yeah. can't have it in just one day. Um, when we work on that, what we find is that the, at the beginning of the relationship, there were often a series of conversations that were missed and assumptions mm. were made. So what happens is we find out what some of the underlying assumptions were before the relationship really even got off the ground. And from there, we can start to construct a really solid foundation based on an actual explicit conversation. What is our purpose? And how do we want to accomplish that purpose? Because it's not enough to have a why. We mm. also have to have the how, because without that, now we have a philosophy and it's great to have a philosophy. I love a good philosophy, but sure. I need to also have the nuts and bolts. How am I going to approach this person? Is it in line with our vision for our relationship? Yeah. And, it, and it's so fascinating because if you think about it, uh, we do go into relationships or marriage. We do go in without asking a lot of questions yeah. and making a lot of assumptions. And just kind of going with, depends on the type of person who they are. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes, you know, because of, the first flushes of like, you know, the, the honeymoon phase and everything, you just don't feel the We're need wired to for ask. Yeah. yeah, and you just don't feel the need to ask those kind of questions or you think everything will take care of itself. However, to your point though, you wouldn't really start a business like that. Right, I mean, we don't just shoot from the hip and, and mm. throw a million dollars into something before we have at least explored what its potential is and mm. whether it suits our overall life. Do we want to yeah. live that life? And I think that that, if we explored our relationships, our, our connections to people that way, we would find that we actually had more time in our lives. We would have more money. We would have more access mm -hmm. to the things we need, the resources we need, because we wouldn't be wasting time enacting a life we didn't mean to have. Right. Yeah, I, I love that. I think that's, that's, that's fascinating. And it almost, it, to, to me, in many ways, it almost reduces the need for on, not ongoing communication, you need ongoing communication, but it means that it probably eliminates a lot of those ex, uh, extra conversations that you have to have sort of trying to check in with each other or figure out where the other person is if you're united in a purpose. Yeah, a purpose is, an, a, a, is a, you know, a vision, a mission statement mm -hmm. for the relationship can give you an overall framework that means that those sticky fights that are going to come up. You're going to have those sticky sure. fights. They're often much smaller, much more manageable arguments and much more manageable disagreements because the overarching framework is there to support you and to be a container. You know, not everybody is going to have a day where one of you is feeling strong and the other can, can be a little bit weaker, can relax a little mm -hmm. bit and have a problem. Sometimes you're both needing to sit in the passenger seat and the yeah. framework of the relationship can hold you in those moments. But if you don't have one, then the framework doesn't hold you. Now you're at odds and now you're stuck in those patterns that probably aren't helpful and are often based on huge assumptions made very early in the relationship. Yeah, and, and if you think about it, I mean, the, the, the analogy with business as well is obviously when you go to make business decisions, you know, you go back and look at, you know, what's your vision, what's the purpose of the company and then is does this fit with it or did, yes. are we pivoting now? Um, you, yeah, and a pivot's you, fine, but we, mm -hmm. we want to be intentional about it. Yes, 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 rather than it f forced upon us. So talk to me a little bit about these ritual, what did you say, ritual? <laughs> ritual habits of connection. Ritual habits of, of connection. So maybe explain what those are. Yeah, so they're or unique to everyone. Mm -hmm. um, but the point is that they are not just getting up at the same time every day. That, that could mm -hmm. be a ritual, but they're doing it with a certain intention. So a ritual is something where you've decided not only how you're going to do something, but what attitude you're going to do it with, and it's going to suit your purpose. So I like to think of the small moments that you can touch base with your partner in a way that suits their actual desires, right? Mm -hmm. So my desire for um, having something done for me, having something handled for me, that's a place where my partner can step in and know that the, the washing of the dishes after, after 
dinner time is an actual habit of connection that he can call me into, right? It's, that can be a moment of actual connection versus just a chore. It might be as simple as having coffee after work or mm -hmm. um, going to the gym together before work. It could be anything. Um, if you have kids, it might be that five minutes after bed before you have to go answer the first call back to give the second glass of water. It, mm -hmm. it could be yeah. any time, but it, it's always going to be this, this, it has the same tone to it. You meet it with a certain energy. And it's intentional. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's, I think that's great because I mean, I do think that we get into a lot of unintentional habits, right. Or just habits yeah. or even, even to your point, even times that we think we are doing things for the other person, but the other person doesn't really care about it. And then exactly. later on when we have that argument, we're like, yeah. but I did this, this, and this. And then we're like, well, I never asked you to, I don't really care about that. I want you to do this, this, and this. Right. We <laughs> score keep. And then we forget mm. that we actually have to, love our partners the way they want to be loved and vice mm. versa, right? It's no good to try to love each other the way we wish we were loved. That's just projection, 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 and will not work. You're going to be caught in a relationship stuck right in the 1950s. Let's get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> we can get a full 21st century upgrade. Yeah. yeah. And if you think about it, I mean, the same, again, uh, you know, drawing on your experience at work, right? If you're if you're running a business or you're managing people, whatever, you don't communicate with everybody in exactly the same way. Yeah, because exactly. people are different and they and they receive information differently. Maybe one person you can be very blunt and direct with and everything, and they love that because that gets yeah. them going. It might destroy another person. You have to take a different approach. Right. So it's the same. It's the same thing. Is that sometimes to your point is <clears throat> maybe we're forgetting about that we need to communicate and as you say love somebody in the way that they need to be just like we would at work communicate with different people differently right that relationship building skill that gets us clients that mm -hmm. skill is absolutely transferable but we have to remember that our partner doesn't owe us their love we right committed to something right so we have to just remember mm -hmm. that we don't think a client owes us business mm -hmm. we approach yeah. that client as as uh, we want to meet be in service we can use that same energy at home yeah <clears throat> and as we say you know we want to earn your ongoing business over time right which yeah. may be that might be an interesting experiment for people to go to their significant other and say i want to i want to earn your love over time yeah <laughs> it's a bold statement and some people would be terrified to make it yeah. because what might get asked of them and that is a hint that you are operating on a whole bunch of underlying assumptions mm -hmm. rather than a solid foundation of explicit agreements yeah and and it's and i do and it, i i guess probably this whole pandemic thing in this lockdown it's probably if nothing else, um, it may have given people space and time to maybe examine some of these things more closely. Because let's face it, I mean, yeah. there's probably a lot of relationships that have definitely been laid bare by the enforced proximity of yes. the last while. And so rather than look on that as a, as a scary thing, maybe this is a fantastic opportunity. I believe it is. I've seen some people taking chances and having conversations that they wouldn't have before. And a few of my clients have noticed that just shifting away from having business trips meant that they could clear a few days and actually take a long mm -hmm. weekend at home, a little staycation, if you will, but to work with their partner on something. Normally they would have traveled and they would have looked at it as more of an escape. And that's great. It has a, a place in sure, life. Sure. But when you're home, you can turn towards each other. And the motion of turning towards each other, especially when you're at one of those dull spots in a relationship, that can rekindle everything if you approach it with a mindful intention yeah no i no a goal and i think that's i think that's great and i do think that perhaps the absence of of travel of business travel and all i mean i think that yes there are probably some people that's been horrendous for because they just live for that escape and if that's the case you probably want to ask yourself a few questions about right. what's the purpose of what you have at home uh, back to purpose. But for a lot of other people, as you said, I mean, it may have opened windows of opportunities to actually integrate your partner more into your into your life and not have it so compartmentalized. Yes. Yeah. And it can be challenging and still a move that we that we can grow from that can be the pivot that maybe was forced upon us. And yet, mm -hmm. well, my partner's working 18 inches outside of my office door now. Yes. It's, um, you know, I've been in business with him before. Now we're not in business together, but there he is all the time. Those pivots that I wouldn't have expected, wouldn't necessarily mm -hmm. have asked for, 
they offer a lot of opportunity. Yeah. And, and, to, the, and to that point, right, is uh, to sit down and have some conversations about maybe how do you operate together if you're both working at home yes. and you're having a relationship? How do you how do you make that as smooth as possible? How maybe one person loves being able to interact with the other person multiple times during the day. Maybe the other person can't stand that because it knocks them off there. But again, back to your point about early assumptions. Again, if you don't have these conversations now, you will definitely have one, but it normally it'll probably be at a much higher decibel level. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's worth getting clear on as much as possible. And sometimes we don't know to ask the questions, but a, a mm -hmm. time like this forces us to re-examine. And we don't all know who our partners are. They can have an entirely other personality out of the house. So now here we are in proximity. Maybe we're trying to, you know, home learn some kids. <laughs> mm -hmm. And yeah. we don't know what it's gotta look like until we're in it. But here we are, what are we, nine months into this now? Mm -hmm. It's not stopping overnight. So we can ask interesting questions now and just decide to start from a clean slate. The assumption can be, we don't know what we're doing. Let, yeah. Let's revisit this. And, yeah, and, and that's fine. And, and I think that's a very liberating place to start from is to say like, this is a whole new world right now. And we don't yeah. really know what we're doing. I mean, to be honest, if a lot of, uh, if a lot of people in positions of authority had adopted that from the start and said, I don't have a clue what I'm doing, um, maybe we'd be in a better place right now as we opposed to people be. make making yeah. it up as they go along. Um, but that's all. It's, a, it's very interesting. But I do think that, uh, you know, it's interesting because you, you, um, you know, you studied young and obviously archetypes yeah. and all of that th type of thing. I do think that that's an interesting thing that maybe people want to look at more is maybe, you know, studying philosophy or Jungian philosophy and that because it does give you a great insight into the personas of people. Yes. I use archetypal theory every day in my life. Mm -hmm. When I was first getting this degree, all of my uncles were like, what are you going to use that for? And the <laughs> answer is everything. Yeah. If, you, if you aren't finding the answers you need in the sound bites, turn to the great philosophers of our time and before us. There, there is a wealth of information out there. For me, archetypal theory frees me up from thinking that everything my, my partner does is personal. And now I can see a, a much broader picture and I can remind myself that I'm acting out patterns that humanity has acted out for all of time. And that lets me off the hook just enough to make a change. Yeah, there you go. I mean, so I think, so I really would re recommend people. And to be honest, I mean, Jung is relatively easy to, yeah, to read yeah. and understand. It's not, it's not, it's not really like. It's not what people deep. think it is. <laughs> yeah, it's not exactly when you say, oh, you should read some Jungian philosophy or whatever, you know, it's not. It sounds way more pretentious than it is. It's much, it does. much, much it does. simpler. It does. There's a lot. I mean, start with, uh, you know, start with memories, dreams, reflections. It couldn't possibly be an easier read. It basically reads like a novel. Yeah, yeah. No, it's perfect. And I do think, and I do think this is a fantastic time. And, uh, and the kind of work that you're doing, I think is fantastic now, because I do think that if there's one lesson coming out of this, I think you have to build your, your world one relationship at a time. Yes. And I also think that it's a good message to the world too, is everybody is maybe take a step back from constantly focusing on big macro issues and stuff that you have very little control or influence over and maybe get back to fixing the things that are around you and that'll have a ripple effect that'll be much more impactful in the long run i love that i really appreciate it yeah yeah absolutely <clears throat> and um and thank you for today, because I think you've made it very simple for people, you know, take a look at how you operate in your, in your business and take a look at how do you, how do you communicate with people who work for you? How do you attract customers? How do you hold on to customers? How do you delight? You know, we talk about cu customer experience is a big thing now. We're always yeah. about like, how delight do we make them. it that you delight them and that end to end customer experience and then bring it home and say, okay, how can I delight the, yeah. This customer who, who basically at the end of the day is the most valuable one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And when that is done with mutuality, really, there isn't anything better to come home to. <laughs> Exactly. Well, listen, Dr. Jolie, this has been fantastic. Um, all of uh, Jolie's information will be below this video here. So you can um, you go check that out. And I really encourage you to. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Well, sure. So what I do is help entrepreneurial women take their 
best skills, transfer them to their home life by really digging in uncovering those patterns and doing it fast. I don't like to wait around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Jungian psychology kind of takes a long wander. You can take six or seven years. I like to get results quick. So I work with people on one day intensives to go deep into their relationship habits and make an actual strategic plan, a written plan. How am I going to approach this? What are the conversations I need to have? When am I going to have them? And from there, the whole world is your oyster. There's really nothing more you could ask for than to just get started. So that's what I do. And you can find me at JolieHamilton.com. Yeah, and I would, in, I would encourage people to check it out. I think this is a fantastic opportunity. I really do think you can set your, the rest of your life up right now uh, to be very successful, to, to be everything that you want it to be if you take that intention. As you, and as, as Jolie pointed out, if you figure out the purpose you go through a process like this. So you're never going to get, you're never going to get a time like this again. No, let, let this inhale. Let <laughs> yeah. this be the moment we can breathe yeah. just a little bit. And let's, yeah. and let's say, hopefully we don't get a time like this again, but uh, <laughs> but seeing as that we have it now, really take it, you know, you might as well make it work to your advantage as best you can. All right. Well, listen, uh, thanks again, Jolie. Thank you all for tuning in. I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.